very much for having me here. Um, I represent Goodyear Ventures, which is the investment arm of uh, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And uh, today we are here to talk to you about the real world use cases of the Helium Network as we see it and as we are uh, trying to implement it in our business. So before we go anywhere, um, let's just talk about who Goodyear is. Uh, in short, we are a 123 year old company which enables mobility of goods and people. So anytime a plane lands, or a truck moves goods, or you drive in a car, um, it, chances are that the tire industry is there with you, and we are a major player in that industry. So we have been helping people and goods move for the last 123 years. So you might uh, wanna ask, what are we doing in the crypto space, right? Uh, in the next 20 minutes, I hope to uh, shed some light on that question. Uh, so um, what we are really uh, looking at is what are the next 123 years of uh, mobility going to look like? And if we, if we look at that, there are five key trends in our industry that are very, very important. A lot of you may be riding platforms like Uber and Lyft. Uh, the large point for us there is uh, how mobility is changing is that individual ownership of cars is moving to fleet ownership of cars. So that's kind of one big change we are seeing in our industry. Autonomous vehicles, you're seeing a lot of use cases where goods are getting delivered by autonomous uh, robots. Uh, there's use cases where uh, you know, groceries are getting delivered, people are stocking shelves using the, in the middle mile with autonomous uh, mobility. There's a, there's a lot of use cases around electric vehicles. You're starting to see that uh, decarbonization of transport is very important and EVs are playing a huge role there. Uh, and of course, sustainability is something that's underlying uh, all these trends. The one in the middle is what brings me here today, what uh, brings us uh, with respect to the helium relationship. And I, wanted, I do want to say that we are very proud investors in helium uh, in their last fundraise. So very, very excited to be partnering with Amir and Frank and team. Um, the connectivity aspect, which is in the center of these five key trends, is what is really bringing the helium relationship to Goodyear and to other industries, I, I assume, in a very meaningful way. Uh, the reason is everything is connected today, and it should be, and there is value in that connectivity. Let me give you one example. If we are running an autonomous vehicle, if you're driving behind a truck that's moving goods for a retailer completely by itself, and it's happening today, it's not, it's not utopia, it is actually real today. If you're driving behind that truck and there is no driver in that truck, you would like the components of the truck, including the tires, to be connected in a way that safe and efficient mobility is possible. Uh, uh, all these components, with, when they need help, they need to raise their hands up uh, to a system and say, hey, I need help, right? So we believe that the world of connectivity is really upon us. And it's not really feasible for us to achieve all these new modern technologies without having that hyper-connectivity. And that includes our industry, the tire industry. And we are really excited about that because that brings us into the next 123 years of our existence. And uh, we feel that we can make mobility safer and more efficient with all these trends. Uh, but the key thing to solve for here is making everything connected. And you can imagine that's, pro that's what uh, got us really excited about the Helium, uh, you know, Helium uh, network and, and the team that's actually doing this work and the community that's actually helping build uh, the Helium ecosystem. So we have made uh, 12 investments out of that and Helium is kind of in that middle where we uh, think it's one of the greatest uh, examples of how to make ubiquitous and efficient connectivity happen. I won't belabor on all the companies we have invested in. We are very proud of each one of them, Helium in particular, of course. Uh, so, moving forward, it may be a surprise to you that connected tires is not a new thing. We actually know or have connected tires up before. On the left hand, on the extreme left hand side of this image, you see a gentleman bending down and actually triggering a sensor that's inside the tire, so that uh, he can get the tire's unique ID. And when he is actually measuring the tire's parameters. Uh, he can record it against that ID. Why do you think that's important? You are a consumer, you drive your car, I'm not sure you ever end up measuring your tires till someone tells you it's time for you to change the tires. But for large commercial fleets that move goods all the time, safety is important and you have to keep up with preventive maintenance and therefore this stuff is very important. Imagine FedEx, imagine UPS, imagine Amazon. 
So they are people who would value these kind of things. But on the left-hand side image, there is a big problem. The problem is this human hand that's holding that trigger that has to scan the tire, uh, it becomes very difficult to reach products at scale. It is possible, it's feasible, the technology works. It's called RFID. But it is difficult to scale it because it's a lot of manual effort to make that reading happen. So you can imagine how the Helium network can help. And we have some very excited engineers in our team working with, uh, with the Helium team uh, in exploring how we can actually get that use case to become more scalable and less costly uh, because of the manual effort needed in, in kind of scanning that use case. There are use cases where sensors are going inside the tire. Uh, and as I said, all of these are designed to fit a vehicle which is inherently getting more connected, right? Uh, so all of that, we believe, can come together uh, and make for a very, very much, much safer and much more efficient mobility uh, in terms of giving these, uh, bringing these uh, use cases to life. So in our attempts to connect the tires to uh, the network, uh, we have quite a bit of experience. I've actually personal experience working in uh, IoT projects related to tires, and the goal was there was always to make mobility more safe and more efficient. In fact, you may imagine if there was any data scientists in the room, if I tell you how a tire is actually leaking, if there is a nail in the tire, it is actually possible to prevent a roadside incident from happening for a commercial truck customer before it actually happens, because we can understand those signals coming out of the tire, and we can actually predict that there is something wrong with it. So those kind of uh, you know, use cases make mobility safer and more efficient. And we have connected up tires in the past using uh, for those use cases. And these are some of the challenges that I personally run into. Um, these are, uh, we, we had a lot of complexity in managing SIM cards. And we are a global company. We, we operate all around the world. Uh, managing networks globally also is, is a bit of a challenge. It takes unique geogra geographic ap approaches. One of the things that I run into is data cost issues. I think Amir was on stage talking exactly about that problem. Um, what I can afford to pay to watch Netflix is not the same cost structure that should apply to connecting things like tires, right? So it's not gonna be $8 a month. That just doesn't work. Uh, so we, we've had faced problems around how expensive it has been to achieve these levels of connectivity. And uh, of course, last but not the least, there's an active amount of debate on whose data, who gets what rights to use what data, et cetera. So these are all uh, problems or opportunities that we have seen in achieving a connected world with, with, respect to, with respect to our product and our industry. Not all these problems can be solved with one silver bullet, but when we first met Helium, we looked at what you guys were doing and what the community is building, and we felt that this was incredible because it has potential implications for having a global network offer us that connectivity solution. It may not solve all the connectivity aspects that we're looking for from the tire standpoint, but it's really good enough to solve for a lot of the use cases that we have in mind. Uh, so we saw that promise in the network and we, we were really all aboard in terms of uh, coming online and, and working with the Helium team to figure out how we can leverage this incredible network and make our products more connected. And that effort is what is continuing today, and we hopefully will, will have more uh, to talk about in the next couple of months with respect to what we are doing. So how can the Helium network help with respect to uh, what we need? The first thing I love about the network is how global it is. It is very, very hard to find something that looks exactly like that. Um, and we have to really thank the Helium community for building something, uh, some, uh, building something that is as unique as that one and as ubiquitous as that one. So having this contiguous aspect of, of a network, not having to worry about what will happen if I move, if the, if the truck moves or the car moves from here to there, uh, having that contiguous aspect is one of the key advantages of the Helium network uh, that uh, we absolutely fell in love with when we saw the, saw the first time. And we love it every day because it seems to be key, seems to be growing exponentially as as we speak. I don't know uh, in these twenty minutes that I'm talking, it probably I don't know how many more uh, modems we're going to add, but it's exciting stuff. It really is to see the growth. 
So we really love the fact that it's global, it's contiguous, and it's uh, taking the worry out of my mind in terms of which network partners do I have to find in which parts of the world, because we make products that go everywhere. We will have a plant somewhere in, in the US supplying probably products globally or somewhere outside of the US supplying products into the US. So this is really interesting for us to see this global aspect uh, of the network. The second aspect of a network, I talked about cost. Uh, I spoke to Frank and I tried to understand, hey Frank, what would it cost if I actually connected a set of four tires that go in a car, assuming that we have the right sensors and all, and we don't yet, we're working on it, and I think we'll have high confidence we'll find something from the Helium ecosystem. But assume we did all that, what would it cost me? So I did this math, and uh, it came to be about 35 cents per year for an entire car, for its tires to actually communicate, what is it? One once every hour. So this is unheard of. I'm not aware of how else we can achieve this cost structure uh, connecting things. By the way, this is how it should be because things should connect with, with a cost structure that is different from how people connect uh, with the cost structure, right? Um, I pay, I don't know how much I'm paying nowadays, 10, 15, pick a number for Netflix. That's not the type of cost structure we're looking for here. But if you look at what the Helium Network's cost allows us to do, it allows us to connect a car, a, a car's worth of tires, which is four tires, for 35 cents in a, uh, for the whole year. That makes it very interesting. And it, believe it or not, efficiency is very important in all industries, especially in, in the industrial setup that we are in. So cost per passenger mile in moving people and cost per goods mile in moving goods these are important metrics, right? How, no matter how cool your innovation is, those are metrics you've got to hit. And uh, connectivity is a key component of that cost. And as I explained, connectivity is a key component of, of the future of mobility. So this is important. And this is one of the things that got us really excited about uh, working with the Helium Network and uh, really trying to leverage the fact that the community-built network can actually afford to have a much, much lower cost structure uh, compared to some of its alternatives. And uh, that, that got us really excited. So reducing network costs is one of the things that we, uh, we found was very interesting. Uh, the third thing, and, and you know, I've, I come from a world where some of the IoT use cases I have led in Goodyear has involved having a sensor in a tire, communicate to a receiver which bolted underneath the car or the truck, receiving the data, and then transmitting it over a 3G network. Oh, by the way, I have many 3G sunsetting soft stories. Don't, don't get me started on that. So, so, so there's a lot of complexity that we need to really uh, go through. And you know that, for us in the industry, what we are looking for is the data, right? Because the data gives us the ability to uh, analyze and create value for our customers, like the FedExes, the UPSs, the Amazons of the world, and give them better uptime, lower cost of operations, right? So, to, for us to deal with all this complexity is a barrier to adoption. And if the Helium network can take those barriers away, that's great. Now, where this fits is when you simplify the IoT architecture needed to get the data into the network and into our hands, you kind of remove those barriers to adoption. If I don't have to uh, put in a receiver underneath the car, in addition to putting the sensors in the tires, that's huge for us because that, in, that kind of takes away uh, a scalability barrier to exactly uh, achieving that end goal of getting the data. So we really like the fact that from your ecosystem in, in the Helium world, we are meeting a lot of new people who are rethinking sensor design. And because of all the modern stuff that's happened in the last five, six years, which has made uh, you know, sensors much more functional and much more efficient for us, uh, we can imagine a world, as I said, you know, we have been around for 123 years. We can imagine the next 123 being very different and uh, being enabled by these kind of technologies. So very excited for the fact that not only is Helium leading, in our opinion, on the side of network costs for IoT devices, but also the ecosystem that you guys have put together is actually encouraging new sensor manufacturers to come forward. We are working with a couple, we are assessing a couple, uh, uh, with, with the help of the Helium team. 
uh, but it's, it's kind of in enabling these uh, manufacturers to come together, these tech companies to come together and provide us with these devices, these sensors, at a fraction of a cost of what we are used to seeing, uh, even five, six years back when, when, when we were ran, running these IoT use cases. So there's, that's just a triple whammy of advantages, right? So number one is the ubiquitousness around the world. Number two is the cost of the network. And number three, from the Helium ecosystem, we are finding lower cost hardware solutions as well. So uh, I cannot really tell you how excited I am, and indeed some of the Goodyear engineers working inside the company are, uh, to actually partner with, uh, with Helium and the ecosystem players and, and kind of create a robust solution that uh, uh, we, that gets us to the levels of connectivity we think uh, we can get to. Um, next steps. So yeah, we are working with, as I said, we are working with Helium very closely to uh, really understand uh, how we can get to the efficient Internet of Things use cases. Uh, we love the network because we think this is kind of custom built for things uh, versus being a hybrid of things and people. Uh, and we really think that that's, that's key. Uh, we want to partner with players in the Helium ecosystem. So uh, if you're somebody who's thinking in the same lines uh, in terms of what we just discussed, uh, let's have a chat. We'd love to, love to connect with you. And uh, also at the same time, we want to explore the enterprise connectivity use cases. We have uh, a lot of Goodyear facilities that might be uh, looking to connect up differently in the future. And the 5G use cases that are coming forward could be uh, potentially interesting for us. So those are also things that we are uh, we are talking about. So I have a couple of minutes left on the clock. I, I can open up to questions if that's uh, if that's some if people have any questions. But uh, really, before I did that, I wanted to thank Helium and thank the Helium community for what you built. Uh, it's truly valuable for uh, companies like Goodyear, which has existed for about 123 years, uh, in terms of in, truly valuable to us in the industry to take connectivity to the next level. And when we take connectivity to the next level, we take safety and efficiency to the next level also. So that's, that's really important for us. Uh, so I, I thank you very much for, for your attention and opening it up for any questions. Real quick, in terms of partnering, I'm curious if you've addressed the idea of sharing data from your sensors. So here's a specific use case. In my agricultural application, we're planning on having a sensor on the on the uh, tractor to, you know, GPS, right? Well, if you already have one there that's got it built into the tires, could we come to you and say, hey, give me your GPS, and we'll pay you for that data, and that could be a partial sharing situation. Have you thought about that sort of thing? Yes, yes, absolutely. I think those are uh, very, very important considerations because. If you don't have to retool something for your use case, in addition to me retooling it for my use case, uh, I think that's more efficient and a smarter way of approaching it. So yeah, let's talk is all I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. So I think we we want to also, uh, I mean, as an example, we are also considering, uh, you know, working with the car manufacturers because they're an important component in this whole ecosystem, and uh, we are actively working with some of them uh, to understand how we would fit in to this overall landscape of the connected car. But I think that's a very fair game in terms of what we would want to do. We have 30, 29 seconds left. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. <laughs>